So narinig mo na ang salitang depreciation at ang pagkakaintindi mo dito ay ang dahan-dahang pag-deteriorate ng fixed asset sa pagdaan ng panahon. Pero maniniwala ka ba doon pare Chong kapag sinabi ko sa yung there's actually more to depreciation than just physical wear and tear? In this video, I will show you kung ano ba ang deeper substance ng depreciation. My name is Ron and I'm a certified public accountant. So previously in episode 6, I mentioned that we're going to have a mini-series focused on adjusting entries or those entries we prepare at the end of each accounting period to make the books in alignment with the accrual basis of accounting. Ngayong alam mo na ang reason or the big picture kung bakit tayo gumagawa ng adjusting entries at the end of each accounting period, we will now discuss the specifics of each common adjusting entries, one of which is the adjustment for depreciation. But before we begin, please don't forget to hit the like button if you like this video or you learn from it, share this video to your timeline or your friends, and hit the subscribe button and bell notification icon para lagi kang updated pag may bago akong uploads. Also, make sure to comment down your answer to the mini problem that I will flash on the screen at the end of this video. Now, in this second out of many chapters of episode 7, I'm going to discuss the accounting for depreciation. So without further ado, welcome to the second chapter of Accounting Heist, episode 7. So ano ba ang depreciation? A common misconception is that depreciation simply refers to the wear and tear of a fixed asset. Well, partially that is true pero there is a deeper substance to depreciation aside from just the physical aspect of wear and tear. So ano ba itong sinasabi kong deeper meaning ng depreciation? Allow me to show you instead of merely telling you. Assuming we're operating a laundromat business with monthly accounting period, so, bumili tayo ng 6 tubs na laundry equipment worth 500,000 pesos on January 1, 2020. For cash ha, dude pare chong, dahil rich kid tayo, ba? We pay cash. And also, let's assume na for the first 6 months of our operation, we earned laundromat revenues of 200,000 pesos monthly. Under the cash basis of accounting, this whole cash outflow would be recorded on January 1, 2020 as an expense. If namanood mo na ang episode 6, alam mo na ang tinatawag na matching principle. If hindi naman, I put the link to that video in the description below. The matching principle states that it is but logical that you make expenses in order to generate revenue. At dahil sa relationship ng revenue at expense na ito, an expense should be recognized in the same period with the related revenue that it helps to generate. Ibig sabihin, para ma-measure natin ang performance ng isang business, dapat ang expenses ay nakamatch sa related revenue within the same period. Now, as you can see in this example, if we expense the whole cost of the laundry equipment in January, it would result to the following. First, there will be no reported asset in the balance sheet pertaining to the laundry equipment starting January up to the succeeding reporting periods. So, ibig sabihin, kapag pumunta ka doon pare chong sa laundromat area mo, may makikita kang washing machine. Pero hindi ito reported sa balance sheet, which is wrong. Second, the income statement for January would show that the whole cost of laundry equipment was consumed in the said month. So, mag a sa income statement mo doon pare chong na meron kang loss. Lastly, in the income statements of the following months, it would show that we earned revenue without incurring expense. Kung paiiralin natin ang common sense dud pare chong, ibig sabihin na kapag laba ka nang wala kang ginagamit na laundry equipment. To summarize, accounting for a fixed asset using cash basis will result to improper matching of revenue and expense as well as understatement of asset account balances. Dito naman papasok ang concept of depreciation. Depreciation is the accounting method to allocate the cost of a tangible asset over the accounting periods in which it will provide benefits to generate revenue. Ibig sabihin, the concept of depreciation recognizes the fact na ang total cost ng fixed asset ay hindi lamang mapapakinabangan sa loob ng isang accounting period. Kaya naman, we spread out or allocate the cost of a tangible asset over the periods in which it is expected to provide benefits. 
Ibig sabihin, the concept of depreciation recognizes the fact na ang total cost ng fixed asset ay hindi lamang mapapakinabangan sa loob ng isang accounting period. Kaya naman, we spread out or allocate the cost of a tangible asset over the periods in which it is expected to provide benefits para makapag-comply tayo sa matching principle under the accrual basis of accounting. That is, properly matched ang expenses at revenues. Sir, sabi mo ang depreciation ay applicable sa tangible asset or mga nahahawakan na asset. So, ibig sabihin, pwede dyan yung walis tambo? Now, meron tayong tinatawag na capital expenditure or these are the costs that we do not recognize directly as an expense but rather, we recognize initially as asset or in accounting terms, we capitalize and then, we gradually allocate to expense in the succeeding periods. So, sa madaling salita dood para chong, these are the costs that we record initially as asset and every end of period, ginagawan natin ng adjusting entry para i-reclassify as expense. Paano ba natin masasabi na ang isang cost ay capital expenditure? Two concepts will apply. Una, the cost is expected to benefit more than one accounting period. Ibig sabihin, may makukuha kang benefit sa cost na ito for more than one accounting period. At pangalawa, the expenditure is material. So let me answer your question by asking your questions in return. Magbe-benefit ka ba sa walis tambo for more than one accounting period? In our previous example, monthly lang ang period natin so I suppose yes, ang walis tambo ay magtatagal for more than one accounting period unless hardcore ka gumamit doon para chong. Second question, magkano ba ang walis tambo? Sa tingin mo kapag in-spread out natin ang cost ng walis tambo, magkakaroon ba ito ng malaking impact sa decision making natin when we look at the financial statements? So, in order for a cost to be capitalized and spread out across accounting periods, it must also possess materiality. Now, in the real accounting world, meron tayong tinatawag na capitalization policy or ito ang guiding rules ng isang accounting entity kung kailan magka-qualify ang expenditure as capitalizable. The most common factor na isineset to identify whether a cost will be capitalized or recorded directly as expense is based on the amount. For example, an entity may set that all costs above 10,000 pesos which will benefit more than one accounting period will be capitalized or recorded initially as an asset. Now, if ang capital expenditure ay magpo-fall under the definition of a fixed asset, then therefore, depreciation will apply. Ngayong alam mo na ang concept behind depreciation at kung bakit natin ito ginagawa, the next question now is how do we compute depreciation? Now, according to paragraph 60 of PAS 16, which is the applicable accounting standard for property, plant, and equipment, the depreciation method used should reflect the pattern in which the asset's economic benefits are consumed by the entity. Ibig sabihin, ang depreciation method ay related or may connection dapat sa kung paano natin ginagamit ang asset na ide-depreciate. Ito ang dahilan, dude pare chong, kung bakit mayroon tayong different methods to compute depreciation. Now, since this is a basic accounting tutorial, I will only discuss the common depreciation methods at kung saan ito ginagamit or saan applicable na scenario in relation to paragraph 60 of PAS 16 na to reiterate sinasabing the depreciation method should reflect the pattern in which the asset's economic benefits are consumed by the entity. Now, before we jump into the different methods of depreciation, let's discuss first ano ba ang factors that we need to compute depreciation, namely, useful life, residual value, and depreciable amount. What is useful life? Ang useful life ay ang estimated lifespan of a depreciable fixed asset kung saan ito ay inaasahan na makakakontribute or magagamit sa operations. For example, the useful life can be in terms of time periods kagaya ng years, months, etc. However, pwede mo rin ito i-express in terms of expected production output. For example, yung mga machine sa pagawaan ng t-shirt Mayroon niyang estimate kung for instance, ilang piraso ba ng t-shirt ang kayang i-produce ng isang machinery. So, pwedeng 10,000 t-shirts, 5,000 t-shirts, etc. Pwede rin tong hours of service or working hours which is applicable perhaps for those businesses na ang source of revenue 
ay related to provision of service or measured in terms of hours. Next, ano naman ang residual value? Ang residual value naman ay ang ine-expect natin na value ng asset matapos natin itong gamitin o pakinabangan. Sir, lagi bang may residual value? Hindi po lagi. May mga pagkakataon na pagkatapos gamitin ng isang bagay ay totally wala na itong halaga. Ouch! Lastly, ang depreciable amount ay ang part of the cost of the asset in which we are going to allocate over the asset's useful life. Ibig sabihin, dahil ang residual value ay ang value ng asset after natin mag-depreciate at the end of the useful life, ibinabawas natin ito sa initial cost ng asset para makuha ang depreciable amount. Kapag hindi natin binawas ang residual value, ang mangyayari walang matitira na cost at the end of the useful life. Gets bad, bari chong? Ngayong alam mo na ang factors of depreciation, now we can already discuss the common depreciation methods. However, as I have mentioned, since this is a basic accounting tutorial, I will only discuss the common types of depreciation method. Unahin na natin ang pinakasimple, which is the straight line method. Under the straight line method, we simply allocate equally the capitalized cost of the fixed asset over the asset's estimated useful life. Sabi natin the method of depreciation should reflect the pattern kung paano ginagamit ang asset. Now, sa straight line method, bagay ito sa mga fixed asset na ang gamit is more of a function of passage of time. Kagaya for example, if ang business mo is nagpapaupa ka ng boarding house, the usage of the asset is based on the passage of time. So kung imamatch mo siya sa revenue, tugma lang naman diba dahil fixed rent against fixed depreciation expense. Pwede mo rin gamitin ang straight line method if wala ka ng ibang maisip na consumption pattern na babagay sa fixed asset mo. Kagaya for example ng vehicle, which although you can measure the mileage or distance traveled by the vehicle, it may not be practical to do so, kaya we can go back to the straight line method. To illustrate, Big Bang Coffee Shop purchased furniture and fixtures costing 900,000 pesos with residual value of 100,000 pesos and estimated useful life of 8 years on January 1, 2020. Compute and prepare the adjusting entries for depreciation for the month of January 2020. Now, to compute for the depreciation, we need to get first the depreciable amount which is just the cost of fixed asset less the residual value. So for the furniture and fixtures, it's 900,000 pesos of initial cost less 100,000 pesos residual value. Makukuha natin yung 800,000 pesos na depreciable amount. To reiterate, ang depreciable amount lamang ang ia-allocate natin throughout the useful life para at the end of the useful life or kapag fully depreciated na ang asset, matitira ang residual value. So next, we just have to divide the depreciable amount by the estimated useful life. So for the furniture and fixtures, it's 800,000 divided by 8 years. So the annual depreciation for the furniture and fixtures is 100,000 pesos. Now, ang sabi ng problem is depreciation for the month of January. So ibig sabihin, we still have to divide the annual depreciation we obtained by 12 months para makuha natin ang monthly depreciation. So for furniture and fixtures, the depreciation for the month of January is 8,333 pesos, 0.33 centavos. Sir, may butal, tama ba yan? Oo, dude, pare, chong. Hindi po required na laging walang decimal ang sagot. Now, to do the entry, debit depreciation expense, furniture and fixture, 8,333.33, and credit accumulated depreciation, furniture and fixtures, 8,333.33. Now, every month end, ganito ang magiging adjusting entry hanggang sa ma-fully depreciate ang fixed asset. Sir, ano naman yung accumulated depreciation? Ang accumulated depreciation account ay isang contra-asset account which is presented as a deduction to a fixed asset in the balance sheet. At dahil ito ay contra-asset, meaning binabawasan niya ang balance ng isang asset na mayroong normal debit balance. Ibig sabihin, ang normal balance ng accumulated depreciation ay credit. So, to increase accumulated depreciation balance with credit and to decrease with debit. Dito natin kinakarga ang periodic depreciation ng isang asset. So, habang nagdi-depreciate tayo every period, nadadagdagan ng nadadagdagan ang balance ng account na ito. Now, sabi natin ito ay pinipresent as a deduction to the fixed asset. 
Ang net amount or the difference between the cost of the fixed asset and the accumulated depreciation ang tinatawag natin na book value ng isang fixed asset. Ang book value or in other words, the carrying amount represents the current value of an item of fixed asset. Ibig sabihin for instance, in our example, since the cost of the asset is 900,000 pesos and the accumulated depreciation as of January 31, 2020 is 8,333.33, the book value or carrying amount as of January 31 is 891,666.67. Next, the second method to compute for depreciation is called the units of production method. Ito naman ay bagay sa mga fixed asset na ginagamit natin sa production ng mga produkto. In this depreciation method, the consumption pattern of the fixed asset is tied up to the production of each unit of a product. For example, Big Bang Coffee Shop purchased a special coffee maker machine on January 1, 2020. Ang machine na ito ay kayang gumawa ng kape na hindi lang basta aalusin ng antok mo, pati feelings mo dud pare chong magigising. So ang cost ng machine na ito ay 210,000 pesos at kaya nitong makapagtimpla ng 200,000 brews of coffee. So after mo siya magamit at the end of its useful life, pwede mo siyang ibenta as scrap for 10,000 pesos. In this example, the use of the coffee maker is directly tied up to the coffee which is our product. So the problem requires us to compute and prepare the adjusting entries for depreciation for the months of January, February, and March 2020 assuming the following sales data for the respective months. For January, 5,000 units. For February, 7,000 units. And for March, 4,000 units. So first, we have to get the depreciable amount, which is the initial cost of 210,000 less the residual value of 10,000. Next, we will divide the depreciable amount by the estimated units of production, which is 200,000 units. Now, ibig sabihin, for every unit produced by the coffee maker, the depreciation is 1 peso. Now, all we have to do is multiply the depreciation per unit of production to the actual number of units produced for the months of January, February, and March. So the depreciation charges are 5,000 pesos, 7,000 pesos, and 4,000 pesos for the months of January, February, and March respectively. Now, the adjusting entry to record depreciation for the month of January is debit cost of goods sold for 5,000 and credit accumulated depreciation coffee maker 5,000. Now, kung mapapansin mo, I used cost of goods sold instead of depreciation expense and the reason for this is because the fixed asset is directly used in the production of the product sold. Pero, wag mo muna ito masyado isipin dun pare chong dahil this will be discussed in higher accounting subjects especially in cost accounting. Now, pwede mo rin naman gamitin ang depreciation expense but I just want to show you that depreciation can also be accounted for as cost of inventory meaning you can actually transfer cost from a fixed asset account to form part of inventory or another asset but that is for another day. Now, the entries for February and March will involve the same accounts but with amounts of 7,000 pesos and 4,000 pesos respectively. Now, the third depreciation method is called the sum of the years digits method or in short, SYD. Tinawag itong sum of the years digits dahil ina-add natin ang number of years of estimated useful life para magamit sa pag-compute ng depreciation each year. Sa method na ito, may gagamitin tayong rate each year which will be obtained using the following formula. The rate is equal to the remaining useful life divided by sum of the years digits. Ang rate na makukuha natin dito ay siya namang imumultiply natin sa depreciable amount para makuha ang depreciation expense. To illustrate, on January 1, 2020, Big Bang Coffee Shop purchased a super deluxe massage chair. Ang massage chair na ito sobrang suwabi magmasahe dud pare chong. Hindi lang muscle pain ang mawawala sa'yo dud pare chong, pati yung kirot ng puso mong nawasa kayang alisin. So ang cost daw ng massage chair na ito ay 500,000 pesos at ito daw ay magagamit mo for 5 years at the end of which totally wala na itong halaga, meaning zero residual value. So kailangan lang natin i-add ang number of years, so ibig sabihin dahil 5 years ang useful life, that is 5 plus 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1 equals 15. So to compute for the rate na imumultiply natin sa depreciable amount, we simply have to divide the remaining useful life with the sum of the year's digits. So for the first year, that is 5 over 15. For the second year, 4 over 15. For the third year, 3 over 15, and so on. 
ang makukuha nating rate dito ay siya naman nating imumultiply sa depreciable amount. So meaning 500,000 pesos times 5 over 15, 500,000 pesos times 4 over 15, and so on. Kung mapapansin mo, dude pare chong, pababa ng pababa ang depreciation expense every year, which is precisely the intention of this method. The philosophy behind this is that mas mataas ang capacity ng isang fixed asset na makakontribute sa operations during its early years dahil bago pa. Kaya naman mas malaki ang depreciation na ina-allocate in the early years. Now, the entry to record the depreciation expense will include a debit to depreciation expense massage chair and a credit to accumulated depreciation massage chair. For December 31, 2020, the amount is 166,666.67. For 2021, it's 133,333.33, and so on. There are still other methods of depreciation, but that will be for another video when we are already in the intermediate accounting series. And that's it, dude, pare chong. I hope marami kang natutunan sa chapter na ito. If you enjoyed and learned from this video, please don't forget to hit the like button, share this video to your friends, and hit the subscribe button and bell notification icon para lagi kang updated pag may bago akong video. Also, if you have feedback, questions, or suggestions, feel free to comment down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Again, my name is Ron, Certified Public Accountant, and see you next episode.